Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to our match preview segment for our next game at Goodison on Saturday night against Leeds United. We're going to be looking ahead to this game, or obviously just off the back of some, of course, negative news that Luca Dean's just injured his ankle and he's going to miss the game and probably two months of the game, um, which is not good news. But other than that, it looks like the same team from the Fulham game, which we got through very gingerly. I'm joined again by Stephen and Terry. Terry, I'll start with you on this one. How do you feel going into the Leeds game? These are an interesting side, aren't they? I feel uneasy because this is the type of team that we don't like playing. High energy, you know, like high work rates, you know, commit, committed, got some pace in the team. I think this is this is a tough one. This like I've 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 got worries. Leeds have, have performed so far exactly how I expect them to. Like I said at the beginning of the season, um that I expect them to do dead well right up until about January, late January time, and then you'll start to see a tail off of performances as the um the fatigue sets in. It's what's happened to them a couple of times in the championship under uh, Bielsa. But obviously we're gonna play them now in their in, if if that proves to be right, we're going to play them on the the ascension on the on the way up rather than on the than on the way down. Um, I've seen them a little bit like they they've, they've not got a good defensive record. They like us, they ship goals, but they score goals. So it could you know for the neutral be a very good game. You know we, we will score goals in this game. It's just whether we'll score more than they score because I haven't got the greatest of confidence that we'll be able to keep them out because you know they've got. You know, a knack of creating chances, and we we give up chances. We give our we give away possession in in key areas um, when we're not at it, and even when we are at it sometimes. So I don't know. I'm expecting a high goal, get a high scoring game uh, for this one. I'm just banking on our attack, having more about it than theirs, frankly. Yeah, Steve, how do you feel going into this? Have you? It's obviously leads a uh, at yeah. this level for the last couple of years, been an unknown quantity. So you know. What can we expect? Yeah, I think Terry's used the correct word. They're uneasy. Um, that's a perfect way to describe it for me. I mean, like 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 you said, the I think outside of the bottom three, uh, they're the worst team for conceding goals this season. Leads and then <laughs> right behind them's us. And we're the next worst. So, yeah, I had a look here. So the man, uh, 17 goals conceded for Leeds this season. We're, we've got 16. So, um, yeah, I think, it. I like you said, for the neutral, it'll be the perfect game to watch, won't it? Yeah. But I can imagine it's going to be another... And, uh, like, as, I can imagine it's going to be another year off my life expectancy watching this game. <laughs> yeah, sad. to be honest, I felt like that against Fulham. Um, last yeah. 10 minutes, I've, I was sad, it was horrible. It was, it was Derby nerves last 10 minutes against Fulham. Um, but oh, I think we showed a, a, a little bit in that game. Um, Terry, you remember Terry said in the the review, uh, the extra time for Fulham, at, at one point it was champagne football between the, the last 10, 15 minutes of the first half. And if we play like that, like we did against Brighton, uh, we, can, we, can, we can beat these. But then again, they can beat us. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard with they're, they're one of the sort of the team that have come up and there is expectancy on them, but they're more. I think they've got nothing to lose really. Leeds, I think they they've come up. They've got some decent players. Bielsa's done all right. He's been he's uh, played, nominated for like the manager of the year awards as well. Yeah. And I'm surprised by that, but so they play like a team with nothing to lose. Yeah. That's yeah, that's what I mean. These the sort of uh, they've come up and. Worst case scenario is they get relegated again. But they've they've come up and they're playing like a team with nothing to lose. They've got some really good players. Um, they're doing a lot better for me than a lot of recently teams that have been promoted come up and do. We've had a lot of teams in recent seasons that come up and go straight back down again. Um, I don't expect Leeds to be like that. Uh, but the, you know, you look through the squad and they've got some decent players. You know, I I was one of the ones who wrote off Patrick Bamford. At the start of the season, he sort of got bounced around a couple of clubs, wasn't doing anything, but he fair play to him. He's looked top-notch this season. And uh, there's the goalkeeper, Melier, as well. 
who uh, I've watched a couple of times really rate him. Um, and I, I did a bit of research and he was only 20. And I find that really hard to believe. He's almost the, I'm always the same age as him. Um, if, and uh, he, he looks like uh, the real deal, that uh, French goalkeeper. But I think oh, it's going to be a really tough game, like you said, for a neutral. Perfect. Could be a four-all, five-all game. It's one of those. So, um, But I wouldn't say I'm confident, but I'm saying I am looking forward to it. Yeah, like I say, just as we were starting this game, I was mentioning, like, Luca Dean, obviously, he's just, just been found out that he sustained an injury and he'll miss this game and obviously a lot longer beyond that. But how can you see us lining up with that in mind? Well, uh, I can see, I can probably see uh, Ancelotti going with the five in defence again. I think he will, I think he will go for Nkunku. He did in, I think it was Newcastle away, he went for Nkunku uh, when we were without Luca Dean for the game. Um, it might have been Southampton, I'm not too sure. Um, but I think he will go for that five. I think he'll go for the three of Godfrey, Mina and Keane. Um, Iwobi could take that place at right wing back again. I know you'll probably see... Um, It'll get bounced around on Twitter a lot, but a lot of people would probably want him to start there because it was arguably his best performance against Fulham in, in that position. Um, I've gone for Alan Decore and Rodriguez in midfield. Um, there is the chance he might throw a, a Sigurdsson or a Davis in there because they've obviously got midfielders like Harrison and Phillips who are going to need nullifying. But, you know, Alan and Decore against, against Fulham, they were top-notch at times. So I think he and will Calvin stick with them. I think Calvin Phillips is injured. Oh, well, uh, I still think Alan and Decore for us. Yeah. Uh, and now I've, I've gone with Rodriguez as well, number 10. We haven't seen him too much there yet. Um, he's often played on the right or the left, but with Nkunku and Iwobi in, providing the width, I think he will get a bit more space. Um, and then Richardson and Calvert Loon up front, obviously. Uh, Terry, do you agree with that line or? Anything you do a little bit differently? Uh, yeah, I mean, I th- would expect we'll get like the same lineup as Fulham, but just swapping Kunku out for Dean due to the injury. Uh, wouldn't mind him taking Mina out for Holgate. Yeah, that, that was the one I was suggesting actually when I was dropping the end there. Yeah, but to be honest, Ancelotti's a pragmatic manager. Like he might take a look at Leeds, and you know he doesn't stick to one thing. Ancelotti, you know, he adapts and. He's going to take a look at Leeds and he's going to know all about Bielsa. And they play this like mad formation, like, you know, 3 3 3 um, 1. Like, so they've very narrow. Um, and, you know, three banks of three with that Bamford at the top of it as, as a one. So he might, you know, take a view with that and go, right, well, you know, I don't want to, um, don't want to match them up too much. I want to, I want to, you know, get more out wide than just having one player each side. So you, you, know, you never know, he might change it up and decide. They want to play a little bit more width than, than just having a wing back each side. But who you knows? I think his, his options are, are limited. I, I would be surprised if it wasn't, you know, uh, as we said then, the same team, but for Nkunku and maybe Holgate um, in Firmino, you know, because he's not the only one, but he's he's, he's performed so poorly this season, Mina. Drums are Chevy Mina. A lot yeah, of interviews yeah. and things like that. So, so I wouldn't mind seeing Godfrey Keenan. And um, Holgate as a three, and, and if that can click, that might be one you know worth building the rounds at least short term. I think Holgate's got more in the tank as well, physically. I think like he's got a bit quicker. I think we might need that against these. Yeah, I agree with the Holgate shout. Um, I just don't. I'm not sure Ancelotti will go with him. That's the thing. I think he. I think he will stick with Mina, same as he's. You know, it, you could say the same about Pickford as well. I know, I know a lot of people will say take Pickford out, um, but I don't think he will. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll take me in and out personally. Um, I think it was against Man United, Holgate played, and uh, I think he started Mina with him in that game. I'm not too sure, um, but I think, yeah, I think um, Godfrey needs the minutes. Uh, uh, Mina. As bad as he was against Fulham, I do think he'll play against Leeds. And uh, Michael Keane's being the only real 
shining light at, at the only de- the only decent bit of defence really this season because obviously Pickford struggled behind him and Mean's been really poor. Yeah, I was looking at our stats as well. I think he's our third got top goal scorer this season. There's uh, about two goals. Calvert Lewin's leading the way, but he's he's looked all right. Uh, Michael Keane, he's massive improvements on um, on last season, like so. Uh, but I think I I completely agree with you, Terry, on putting Holgate in. I think he's a he's a top notch player, Mason Holgate. I really like him. He's been unlucky with it. He picked up a bad injury. In pre-season, I think it was. I completely agree with putting him in. I just think I think Ancelotti will probably stick with with the, the defenders that we had against Fulham. I like the idea of them as a back three, just because you've got Godfrey one side of Keane and Holgate the other, and then outside of them you've got wing backs. If we're playing a back three, that allows you to go so f- much further up the pitch because I think Kunku is going to be flying forward and providing the width on the whole side, and same for Wobi on the other. It'd be nice for both of them to have a little bit of pace, you know, behind them for recovery. So you got Holgate to cover, you know, likely to be um, in Kunku and Godfrey to cover uh, Iwobi. Michael Keane, who's been the best defender this season in the middle. I think that's that I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm just a fan, obviously, but I think that would be a nice balance. Whereas, you know, you see with Yeri Mina and Anne Keane together. They play so much further back because the two of them together, there isn't enough recovery pace for them there. Mm-hmm. Um, if they get caught high up the pitch, so I would like to see that as a back three, especially with um, second choice, you know, full backs slash wing backs, because they're going to have to be a lot, do a lot of going forward to provide the width. And, and if you're going to do that, you don't want to be, you know, sitting deep at the same time. It's just what I think. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with Terry on that one. I think Holgate definitely deserves to come straight into the team. We see, like last uh, last year, it, we had that spell under, you know, Ancelotti just just arrived, and you could see he put a lot of faith in in Mason Holgate, and he, he definitely, um, he definitely was worth it. He because he was fantastic. He had a really really good run in the team. He looked, uh, you know, a lot of people compared him to John Stones. I think he's better than John Stones. Um. But definitely, he had his best spell at us, Stones, but I think he, he's better than Stones was in that that really good season he had. He was looking fantastic. He's, he's also more well-built. He looks faster, more confident. Um, I think I'd, I'd definitely throw him in. And I think the plan as well, Terry, is I think he wants Holgate and Godfrey to be the, the you know the two in the two centre-halves in the future. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah, I think I think that's the plan eventually have those two young English centre-backs, you know. It'll be an interesting sight to see like, if we can get, obviously that, having those, that kind of like, it would be very formidable physically at least, but we'll see what happens. But with, with that team, do you think we've got the tools we need to beat this Leeds team? We've obviously got a couple of very interesting players, some players who would really rate. I think we've yeah. got the goals, yeah. Yeah, I think I've- I think we could beat any team in the league if that front three uh, all fit and playing. Um, everything behind that is just about, you know, can we keep the doing what we can. The, our front three is one of the most like lethal in the Premier League, I think. So I think as long as them three are playing, you can you can beat anyone. And I'm not, I'm not even taking for granted, oh, it's Leeds, they've just come up. No such thing as an easy game in this league, especially especially now without the, you know, the fans to, you know, to sort of equalise things. Um, yeah, I think we can win. But um, it's not a short thing because Leeds, Leeds will be going into this thing and they can win as well. Yeah, certainly. And on that note, we'll finish with a prediction. Terry? 3-2 Everton. Steve? I'm going to go for 2-2. Two, two. I am not. Good. I haven't been confident since seeing, uh, seeing last week. I think obviously we've got the goals to beat them. 100% we've got the goals to beat them. I'm just not sure if we'll be able to see it through, but obviously I, I am open for 3-2, as the same as Terry, but 2-2 for me, I think. Well, I remember recall watch, I recall watching an absolute classic game between these two teams in 1999. I'm going to go with the same result of that game. 4 all. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest, honestly. I've been, I'd be no. astonished if... Like it, it's it's going to be an insane game, and I'm, I mean, I'm not sure if my nerves can take it, but that's what I can see happening. 
Yeah, you'd get uh, massive odds on a nil nil, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, probably the probably the, white, the the longest odds you can get on a nil nil so far this season. This one. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there you have it, guys. Let us know your predictions for this game. Let us know how you're feeling going into this game. How confident are you? Drop us a comment below. Give this video a like and subscribe for more content. Again, check out the link in the description below this video for some Black Friday offers, take percent off on Everton Direct. So get over there and check it out on your on your Black Friday spending. And until next time, guys, thank you for watching on the Toffee Blues.